So I just love when Pastor Ryan helps me preach my message, you know, because the guy's just that awesome, right? Uh, I, I always am amazed when, um, when somebody else, um, and it's not just Pastor Ryan, but sometimes Candace or a different person, they just come up and like, God was just speaking the same thing to me. Or when Pastor Ryan's like, this happened in my life. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to be talking about. It's so awesome. And, and, you know, Pastor Tori, she was like, you hear what he's, the first service, she's like, you hear what he's saying? You hear, you hear what he's saying? And I said, I said, I, I hear it. I'm standing right here. I hear what he's saying. And, but we were both excited because it's like, man, God is awesome. But what happened with, with Pastor Ryan, you know, th this guy is like, hey, you got a nice beard, you know, which is, I mean, it's nice, but it's kind of awkward. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but there was just something about Pastor Ryan, right, that I don't know if this guy goes up to everybody saying nice beard. Um, but there was something about Pastor Ryan. You know, and then after he was talking, he was like, yeah, you know, you got a good aura. <laughs> and it's like, uh, okay, you know, we'll let you th think some aura or whatever, but like, it's Christ. It's God. It's the Holy Spirit that's deep down in me. The, what you're feeling, you know, and I'm, I'm sure Pastor Ryan wasn't all like getting all crazy on him, but, but you know, he's going to come over to his house. You know, he's going to come over and just sit and talk with them, right? Because of something inside of Pastor Ryan. It's the same thing that's inside of you and me is all of us. But in this message series that we're in is, you know, keep it personal. It's one of the biggest things that I, that I think about in this message is, these messages is just that when we let it get personal, when we really allow God to, to get in there, inside of us, and mess with us, and, and kind of like, you know, just get all the junk. You guys ever, you know, watched a documentary or whatever on how they refine gold, and, and it's like, it's not always easy to allow God to come in and refine us, but oh, the the purity that comes from it, right? You know that gold is probably like, hey, that's hot. It's in that big barrel, and it's just this fire underneath it that's just boiling it, and it's hot. But all of a sudden, that mess, that slag, if you will, that, I think that's what they call it. You know, I'm a, you know, I know everything about gold refinery, but it's like, the, is that fire is going, and it doesn't feel good, but that stuff, that dirt, that mess is rising up, and it doesn't always feel good when God's refining us but oh if we let him do it you know sometimes that's why we we don't allow God to really get close and personal because it's not going to feel that great all the time right God I wanted to hold on to that stuff and he's like oh but you don't understand it's holding you back you don't understand it's keeping you from all that I have for you he's like just let the fire burn just let it burn and let that mess rise to the top so that I can just scoop it right off so that people can see that, that pure gold, that, that pure spirit that's in you. You know, and if they want to say, hey, you nice aura or whatever, that's fine. But we'll explain to them like, hey, it's not just an aura. It's Christ. It's not just this new agey thing. It's the Holy Spirit inside of me that's changed me. It's helped me to be a new person. It's allowed me to walk in freedom and power. It's God inside of me. Amen? Wow. But I look at Peter. We're going to go to Acts 3 this week and Peter and John, they're living out what was said in the end of Acts 2. It is, you know, said that they went daily to the temple. They went to house, from house to house and broke bread. And they were like, God's doing something in our midst that he's with us. His spirit is with us. He's changed us. There's something that's even bigger and better than, than what we ever realized before. And, and so we got to spend time 
at the temple every day. So they were going. And then in Acts 3, there's this story of the man that was sitting at the gate of the temple that was lame, right? Do you guys remember this story? He was a lame man. Lame from birth. That he was laying there. He actually had to be carried there every single day. And, and he was there asking for alms. For you, he was just asking for money, you know. Hey, help me out. I can't work, you know. I can't get out there and make money. Can you just, can you just help me a little bit? And, and Peter and John, of course, because they were living out in Acts chapter 2 and their lives have been changed. They're like, I got to be in church. I got to go to somebody's house and talk about God with them. And I'm going to eat you know, a meal, and then we're going to talk about God some more. And it's just, we're just going to live this life. And they were changed. They were new. They let God, you know, burn out that mess inside of them. And, and so they were living it, right? They were living it. So in Acts chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked them for alms. See, this guy, he's sitting there, and he, every single day, he's sitting there asking for money, and, and he was just asking for this surface need. This, this thing is like, you know... Help me buy a meal. Somebody just help me out, you know? I, I need a little, a little bit of help. Does anybody feel like that you're at that point? I don't know if this guy had before been full of faith or asked God for healing or, or been praying that God would heal his legs or, or if he's just there content with what was happening to him, you know, that just, I'm just content that I'm lame and I just need a little money to eat. I don't know. But so many times we can, we can have this, you know, he's sitting, he's sitting at the doors of the church. These people going in to spend time with God. Person after person are passing by him, religious, knowing you know, things, knowing, kind of knowing God, right? Sitting at the doors. How many people pass by him? Maybe through a little change, through a little money. Hey, here, go buy a meal. Here you go. But so many times we can sit there. It's almost like sit at the doors of the church and be like, God, can you just help me out a little bit? God, just a little, you know, I mean, I just need to get through today. I just need to get through today. But that's not who God is. That's not who my God is. My God is big. He's strong, and he has everything that we need. He's got more than enough. He's our provider, our king, our savior. Uh, but we sit at the gates. We sit there and just be like, hey. Anybody coming by want to help me? But there was something different today, see, because the chapter before, we have this story about the Spirit of God coming. The Spirit of God coming to their midst. You know, and then Peter, he's this guy that rejected Christ. He rejected him. He, he sinned. He was probably full of shame, and then Christ dies for his sins, and then comes back and says, do you love me? Do you love me? And he covers over his shame. He says, no, don't live in shame. He says, do you love me? And he says, you know I love you. Go feed my sheep. Do you love me? You know I love you, God. Christ, he says, come, come on. You know that I do. He says, then go feed my sheep. Go take care of my lambs. Feed my people. Help them. Ask him again, do you love me? I don't know if Jesus talked like that whenever he's saying it, but I was just excited, so I said it in a real high voice. <laughs> do you love me? You know all things, Christ. You know. You know. Don't you know that I love you? He says, then take care of my people. Go. 
And there's something about this. He, Christ has covered over his, his shame. He's not only forgiven, but covered over his shame. And he says, but you have to understand that I want to work in you and through you. I've made this personal so that other people, so that those around you can have this personal experience too. He says, you don't only sit there all forgiven and free and, and just sit there and not help other people or show them who I am. So I've done this for a reason. First of all, so that you could be with me and so I could be with you so that we could, we could be close. But second of all, so that others can see who I am. He says, help my people. So Peter's just changed. He's, he's changed. But then the Holy Spirit comes, and then all of a sudden, he's like, all right, I'm going to help people. And then the Holy Spirit comes, and you see this guy? And he's like, you better watch out. I'm coming through. I'm walking down the street, and I got the Holy Spirit, you know? He's like, oh. <laughs> you better watch out. I'm coming. I'm walking past you. And you better watch out because if I walk past, even my shadow, it's probably going to change your life. I'm going to come. I might touch you and you'll be radically healed because the Spirit of God is in me. I'm going and I'm not going to turn back. God is doing something in me and I'm not going to, you know, keep it to myself. And I just see, it's just like, man, this dude, you know, that same guy that rejected Christ. You know, that, that guy that rejected Christ. So you say, I don't, you don't, uh, yeah, I see all that stuff, but, I oh mean, God, will he, will he really use me? You know, will he really work through me in that way and, and to help people or to bring healing in their life? And I, yes. I mean, look, all throughout the Bible, it's not a, a, a book of, People that were perfect and God worked through them. It was people that were a mess and God said, I'm still going to use you. I want you to seek after me and come close to me and, and let this get personal, you know. And, and I know that you haven't been perfect, but allow me to come and move through you. Allow me to change you so that I can change other people. Allow me. Allow me to come in and refine you. So Peter's changed. He's on fire. He's unstoppable. Why, why shouldn't we be that way? Why shouldn't we walk down the street being like, you better watch out. You better look out because I'm coming and God's with me. He's moving with me, in me and through me. You better watch out, I'm coming through. Now, of course, Pastor Ryan, whenever you talk with that man, he wasn't like, turn from your sinful ways, you know. God's love was just showing through him and he's going to speak the truth to him. But he was allowing it to be unpacked, you know, allowing it to come out in a natural way. And he's going to speak to him. He's going to let it come out. So I'm not saying you go around. I mean, look, I think maybe now I've, that I think about it, I'm speaking it like you all need to go out yelling, you know, turn or burn. But that's not the case. But go. Go out. I, wanna, I want us to go out and, and walk with our heads held high and be like, look, you got problems? I got answers. You got sickness, I got healing. Because I've got Christ. Not me, but Christ in me. Not my power, but by his spirit. Because it's in me. Because I know him. Because I let it get personal. Because we're close, we're tight, we're like this. I want to walk that way. One of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, wrote this. He was speaking about our, our lack of focus on really what God 
who God is and what he wants for us and just how dumb we are, if I could put it in my own words. He says, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with sin and ambition when infinite joy is offered to us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea, we are far too easily pleased. Man, we are far too easily pleased. And I think about that. I think about this lame man here. It's like I just, I'd be happy if I just get a little, a few, a few bucks so I can get a happy meal. I'll be happy if I could just make it through the day. But that's not how God has created us to live. That's not what he went to the cross for. He didn't go through the, to the cross. Jesus didn't die on the cross just so we could just make it through the day. Only to feel burdened and weak the next day. He went to the cross. So they could walk in his power, in his authority. So they could walk in his strength and his love. That doesn't... Uh, it, look, you think of power and authority and strength in human terms. It's like, yeah, there's some people that are stronger than others. But this is, this is God. This is God. So he died on the cross not for us to have a little bit of authority or a little bit of power. Of, of his power, but, but it is immeasurable. It's more than we could possibly ever or think or imagine ever, ever use to its full potential. Like, I, uh, my God has more than enough. His storehouse doesn't run out. It's not some earthly storehouse. We can't even imagine how big it is. And understand that he's placed his spirit inside of you so that you can have access to it. So that those things that he has, you can have. So that those things that Christ did on this earth, not only you could do, but you could do even more. That's what he said. It's, it's just going to do, you're going to do more. Even that I've done. But how many of us are sitting there? And I, look, I'm talking to myself. Like that lame man just asking for a little bit. And maybe once thinking that something great could happen. Dreamed big. But at this point, we're just saying, like, hey, God, help me make it through the day. But Peter and John wanted to tell this guy something. He's like, look, I don't have money, but what I do have, I'll give to you. You better watch out. <laughs> Verse 4, it says, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave him his attention thinking that he's going to get something from it. See, Peter says, I've received something so personal. And he sees this guy, you know, I, I think about this, this guy, he said, look at us. This guy must have had his head held low, hanging his head down, looking at the ground. So many people walking by, and he's asking every single one for, for money to help him. Day after day after day, you could imagine this guy's head bowed down and just looking at the ground. It's like just yelling. It's like, hey, help, help a brother out. Help a guy out. And Paul said, look, I'm not going to run by you today. And think about that. This wasn't Peter and John's first trip to the temple. How many days had they walked by him? something different today because they got the power of the Holy Spirit. And Peter said, look at me. I'm going to make this personal. 
Look in my eyes and see. I want to see you. How many of us have stopped looking up at God and they're just looking at the ground being like, hey, God, can you help? Hey, God, just help, help me out, you know? And Jesus says, look at me. Look at me. I love you. I want the best for you. I've died on the cross for you. I've sent my spirit to be with you. Just look at me. Don't hand, hold your head down. Pick it up and look at me because I've got something for you. And it's not just your daily needs, but it's everything that you need. I will sustain you. I will take care of you. God says, look at me. Verse 6, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. What does he have? He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, so he leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. I love this. He said, look, Peter's like, Hey, I'm not going to give you money today. I might have before passing by you daily in the temple, but I'm not going to give you money today. He says, what I do have, I will give to you. And what does he have? He now has the spirit of God residing inside of him. He now has the name of Jesus that he can speak over any situation to change that situation over any sickness, over any disability, over any hurt or it, shame or, or past circumstance. He's got the name of Jesus. He says, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And I love this because it doesn't say that he waited for a little bit for his legs to strengthen, you know? Um, and, and it wasn't the passing of time that, that helped this man, but Peter's faith was so much that he just grabbed him by the right hand and said, get on up. And this guy jumps up, and I imagine his legs, they're like, you know, this guy was lame from birth. What do you think his legs looked like? We might have been, might have been going through something for a long time. What does our faith or our spirit look like? But it's not going to take a long time for that to turn around. It doesn't have to. What does your faith look like? Look at God. Take your head and, and stop looking at the ground and look up to him and say, God, I know you can do it. This guy, he just jumps right up. And you imagine his little bitty legs, you know, he missed leg day for a long time. <laughs> I don't know if you guys seen any of those pictures. Those are pretty funny, though. Little bitty legs, and Peter's get on up. And I imagine just like a cartoon, this guy's legs is like I don't know what sound it made. It's like little bitty things, and all you know, he's all like Popeye on us or something. You know, he's got legs. His muscles that he didn't have were just there. His tendons, the joints that were, I'm sure, the bones so weak that all of a sudden they were strong. All of a sudden, he didn't only just walk, but he was leaping and shouting and praising God. You don't just get a little bit of strength and go leaping and shouting and praising God. This man was completely healed. And the amazing thing is, it wasn't even his faith that healed him. It was Peter's faith. It was what happened through Peter. And I think that's an amazing thing. But I want to say... I. I know I don't want somebody else's face to get, to get me through the day. I don't want somebody else's faith to have to come and speak to me that healing or that encouragement. I want my faith in Christ and who he is, my relationship, my being close to him to bring things in my life and to those around me. But I love that even if this guy's faith wasn't where it should be, 
Peter's was. And God did something huge in his life. And you know what happened after that? God did something personal in his life, but all the people in the temple were like, hey, there's that guy that was laying at the temple for years at the door of the gate called Beautiful. That guy, and he's running around, jumping, leaping, praising God. What is this that has happened? And Peter's like, look, it's not us. Don't look at us as though we did something. It was Christ. You know that guy that you rejected. And see, I love it. See, whoo, God had done something in him. That guy, you know that guy, Peter, that rejected God, that rejected Christ. Now he's speaking to those other people and saying, look, look at me. You know that guy. The guy that Pilate even was going to let go. You still rejected him and you said, no, I'll just give the sinner to us and put Jesus on the cross. You know that guy. He's the one that healed this man. He's the one that did this work. It's not us. It's him. It's Christ. And let me just tell you again, this is his second sermon. Just as strong, just as powerful. He says, let me tell you something. You put him on the cross. But it wasn't your plan, it was God's plan. So that he could be with us. Not just on this earth, but for every generation. For every person that comes. Not, not just your children and the children after them, but for every single generation. For us. Even so long after that, he said, that person that you put on the cross, that Jesus, it was him that healed this man. He says, you rejected him. Now, why don't you turn around? Why don't you turn around and go back to him and say, God, forgive me. Say, God, I'm sorry I messed up. Sorry that I rejected you, but God, will you forgive me? And God was able to get personal, not only with Peter, not only with the lame man, but then all these other people at the temple. And many, many, many of them turned and came to know the Lord that day. But this whole story, there's so many things in, in, in Acts that you can get out of these scriptures, but... But just something that just, it just hits me that these first chapters here, they, there's just something to me about God wanting to know us, wanting to get personal, wanting to be close, wanting to work in us and through us. That God says, it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. I love you. And I want to work through you. I love you. And I want your life to be changed and those around you to be changed and the world to be changed because I'm close to you. You can do it. Just like that guy, Peter. Don't tell me that you don't have what it takes. Don't tell me. Too far gone because you're not see just like pastor ryan said when he was helping me preach my message before it before i started he said god he's there for you he wants to be close to you don't ever think that he's not there don't ever think that he doesn't care because he does because you're his child because you're his love because he cares for you, he created you, and he wants you to live in his power and authority. Not man's power and authority, but his power and authority. And that doesn't ever run out. Amen? Why don't you stand with me?